What's going on kids? It is Dr. Remy LeBeau and I'm coming at you once again from the x Slayer to provide you my very deep and insightful reaction to the latest episode of The Gifted. Uh, we just had The Gifted Season 2 Episode 2 air tonight and it was very much a filler episode. It was very much an episode about character and um, a little bit of plot but not too much. Hints of some important elements but not really going deep into them. The season, I think, is going to be roughly, um, I don't know, maybe 13 episodes. So we've got a ways to go. But nonetheless, like I would like a little bit more from my um, X-Men show episodes. I'd, I'd like a little bit more, I don't know, importance to the moments um there were some important moments and i'm sure by the end of the season it's going to all feel like very relevant but there weren't like those like captivating moments of like yes this is my fucking x-men show this is what i've been hoping for my whole life and and i'm getting it and i'm proud and, and <laughs> it, it, it was a mixed bag it was a mixed bag but overall interesting elements right there was some interesting elements like the first one is the introduction of Evangeline Whedon. So I had to do a, a bit of a, do, a deep dive into uh, Wikipedia to find out exactly who this character is. But apparently she was in Extreme X-Men, uh, which is the series that Chris Claremont, one of the legendary writers of the X-Men who had left the, the series... Um, came back in the 2000s. So he left, I believe, in the late 90s, came back in the 2000s, wrote Extreme X-Men. And that's actually, I believe, where Sage was introduced, which is um, the one, the character that we've seen since last season who can, I believe, communicate with technology. And we saw her um, kind of gauging uh, Andy's power when he was trying to walk through those walls or run through those walls in this episode. She was, I believe, also introduced in Extreme X-Men. So that's an interesting situation that the writers of the show would feel compelled to take stuff from that particular series because that particular series is not thought of by fans as, like, an important series. It happened, you know? Like, there was some stuff in it, and it was cool, but it wasn't... It wasn't it wasn't it wasn't a standout story. It wasn't the sort of story that if you if you're looking at the the entire uh, history of X Men stories, you're gonna say, well, this is like one of the important ones. This is like maybe in the top ten. And now, actually, as I'm thinking about it, I'm pretty sure there was a Thunderbird in that uh, in that run as well. It wasn't this Thunderbird, but it was a a version of Thunderbird, maybe a new Thunderbird. So maybe they're borrowing a lot from that storyline. I don't know. It's a weird place to choose stories from. Maybe the writers were somehow influenced by that run of the X-Men and, you know, more power to them. I mean, it has really good art. The stories were fine, but the art was great. I, I believe it was, um, uh, it wasn't Carlos Pacheco. Um, it, I, it was, this is really great, uh, X-Men artist. Um, he, uh, he was on Uncanny and then he went on to this and he worked with Claremont and it was, a, it was a beautiful book and, and the stories were fine, but they weren't again, like legendary. But anyway, it seems as though this is a show is borrowing from that a bit. And that's again, an interesting pull. I don't know if I would have chosen that, but Hey, so this Evangeline Whedon, um, apparently she can turn into a dragon. So are we going to see that at some point? Are we going to see the full dragon um, transformation? Maybe. The actress that played her was iffy for me. It wasn't 100% of the caliber that I would want um, from an actress uh, on the show like this. Uh, so that that kind of uh, gave me, you know, not the best impression of the character as, is, as she is being portrayed on the show. Um, the history with... Thunderbird is interesting, though, and the fact that she was working with the X-Men as a lawyer before they disappeared, whatever the fuck that means. Hopefully, at some point, they'll go into that. Um, uh, that is interesting, you know, and the fact that she is now still like a liaison between the existing mutant underground uh, factions that still exist throughout the country, apparently. 
uh, is interesting as well. Um, there are shades of interesting elements there, just like there are shades of interesting elements in the inner circle. And um, it, it's, it's, it's just, there are, the show kind of like, it doesn't go all the way with these elements, which is, I guess, what you would expect from a movie. But nonetheless, if you're going to bring some really big elements into a show like like this, like, you know, sometimes give us content that, like, reflects the magnitude of the importance of the characters and the elements and also, like, what they're capable of. You know, give us some of that because, it, it, I mean, I understand that, like, it's all about budget and all this, but it's like, this, you, you're, you have a legacy to to uphold with obviously the stories and the characters, but also to, um, to like maybe like help transcend the medium of television and, and give us something that is of a quality that you wouldn't expect on a television show. So if you're going to do the inner circle, if you're going to do the hellfire club, like you got to go pretty far and I just have like, you know, a few like random people in it that are sort of important, but not really. Um, you know, like this, uh, this Reva Page, I believe, is what we were told her name is. Now, you know, I mean, she's great, and I, I like her, but, like, it, it's just not the Hellfire Club, you know? It's not the Hellfire Club I know and love. And neither was this other group of people that she killed at the beginning of last episode. So, you know, if you're going to give me Hellfire Club, you got to give me some Hellfire Club, like some real Hellfire Club. But... Uh, it, again, that's me being fanboy, being, you know, very sort of entitled. I, I feel like I deserve to have things portrayed the way they should be portrayed. And I understand that there's like, there's this whole, you know, there's a, there's a, an approach to storytelling uh, 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 of characters and, and storylines that existed in a previous medium, you know, it, interpreting that into a different medium, doing something different with it. I appreciate that, that, that that tendency exists, but also like it's got to feel like authentic to the original content though. Like you can't simply always claim like, Oh, well, well we're like inspired by it. And it's not necessarily a direct translation of it. It's like every now and then give us a, a, a bit of the direct translation, you know? So I like this Reva page, but it's like, I'm not feeling hellfire club, but when I see the cuckoos and when I see, um, the uh, the Strucker mother like call the 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 cuckoos the Frost twin triplets like that's pretty awesome to me like that 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 makes me excited you know you're mentioning Frost you're men you're mentioning a name that's related to Emma Frost who is the White Queen of the Hellfire Club and it has and is a big element in the story of the cuckoos are we gonna see that is that why you're mentioning that name. If that is the case, then that makes me happy, you know? Like, I, I'm excited by that, so... So, you know, that that's great. But if you're just going to drop something like that and then you're going to keep having, like, weird random characters, like, take the position of someone like an Emma Frost, you know, I'm a little shaky on that. And we'll see how it plays out. Again, I do like this Reva character, but she's no Emma Frost, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, she's no, she's no Celine, you know? Um, anyway, uh... The, so the stuff that was going on in the Hellfire Club was, like, interesting. I guess a lot of it was about building up this Reva page as, like, a big threat. Uh, clearly the Kukas are afraid of her. Clearly she was willing to kill Andy. She's willing to go pretty far, and apparently she's very powerful. Like, she was able to, like, uh, influence politicians to spin the story of the of the power outage is something that was completely unrelated to, to what actually happened. That's pretty powerful. And the fact that this Evangeline, um, uh, uh, Whedon character was also kind of terrified of her says a lot. And so I'm not getting it from the character herself, but I'm getting it from the story that she is a big threat and she is cutthroat and she is willing to go pretty far. And like, She's the big bad, essentially. And, like, I, I respect that. I respect that, but I I don't know. There's something missing there. There's something missing there. I hope we get it eventually, though. Uh, anyway, like, the stuff with Andy, uh, that's... It, I don't want that to be dragged out too much because, you know, with Andy and Lauren, like, 
I get it. Like they want to be back together, but it's just like, uh, uh, how long is that going to go on for? You know, like let's have something happen. You know, I want things to happen. Like I like, I like slow burn storytelling, but th I don't feel like that. This is the right show for it. You know, I feel like this, this is more of a show of like, things are happening. Things got to be happening, you know? And that was a somewhat of the pace last season. There were breaks in that momentum, but I think that it had like, at least at the beginning, there was an intense pace to it. I, I, I mean, the second episode was directed by um, the guy that did, I think the Resident Evil movies. And they did, it was like that story where Blink's power was out of control and there were like all these portals everywhere. It was like really big spectacle. And like, even though that wasn't my favorite episode of last season, it was cool, you know, and I would want a little bit more of that kind of momentum and excitement. And like, I kind of felt like we were going to get that towards the end of this episode, but we didn't get it. Um, also, when Evangeline Whedon told Thunderbird about like a mutant, like I assume like, okay, this is a big reveal. Like we're going to get one of the important mutants. And it wasn't one of the important mutants. It was um, just some guy that I think, I mean, I, I'm probably wrong about this, but they, I think they made up for the show. Just like that guy shade. And then that guy, I think his name is bulk. Um, and, you know, maybe it'll be interesting. He, they, they said that uh, she said that he lives underground in, the, in, uh, in sewers and stuff. So immediately I was thinking Morlocks and I was like, okay, cool. Well, maybe there's some Morlocks in the show, but like that, that is maybe, maybe, I, I don't know. It hasn't happened yet, but maybe it will happen. Maybe it will be the Morlocks. That will be interesting. The Morlocks weren't always my favorite element of the X-Men world, but, you know, they are certainly, like, firmly rooted in that world and have an important place in it. And so, therefore, it it's worth, you know, exploring them. And, like, maybe they'll do it in an interesting way. I don't know. But maybe this is not Morlocks whatsoever. Um... I, I I I get what's happening so far this season. You know, like the 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 parts of the family that were broken up want to come back together. Obviously, um, uh, Polaris and um, Eclipse, Pol Polaris and Eclipse are, you know, they're they're a unit. I mean, they've had they've had a kid. They've they've had a romance, and there was a really tight bond there. So. I get like the whole angsty kind of like wanting to get back together thing. Not so much on, on, on Lorna's part, but on Eclipse's part without a doubt. And then of course, um, the Strucker mother and her wanting to get back with her son and, and like that, that whole thing. And then the son actually calling like, it's cool, but don't drag this out all season. Like give me something. Oh, actually, no, there were, there were some, there was an interesting element, right? There was an interesting moment with the father where his mutant power kind of manifested and it like it involves him touching things and disintegrating the molecules maybe like kind of breaking things up into 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 like their their sub molecular components maybe like so, that sort of is what it seemed that his power was his story is captivating i, I want to see where it's going to go but i want it to go a little faster you know <laughs> like I want things like if you're going to have like multiple storylines going on, great. Have something interesting, like really kind of big and interesting happen in one of them every single episode. You know, like I want at the I want at the end of this episode, like something big to happen, but nothing big happened. Maybe like, maybe they're doing what like Buffy used to do, which was like really take their time and save their money. Keep the spectacle back so that, you know, when they want to do the big uh, climactic episodes, the big um, fi finale, like. They spend a lot of money on it and they can do a lot of big effects. Like, I appreciate that approach, but nonetheless, like, you know, there is, again, like I mentioned earlier, like a promise of a show like this to our to the fans that like we're gonna show you like mutants and, and X-Men and like it's going to be a spectacle to some degree on the scale that is that is proper for a show like this. So, you know. I know, I know I'm, again, I'm being a bit entitled here, like wanting too much. And, and also like, I, I, you know, I'm a little bit impatient and like, Hey, th that's fine. 
because we live in a world where binging is like the normal approach to watching a television show and and the the, the these kind of shows that air like every week and uh, tell their stories like very slowly like that sort of experience is dying out a bit and or maybe it's just the fact that we are so used to it, like being able to binge shows like you know that's um that's maybe affected our ability to just like be patient with a show like this um i i have hope for the show uh i really like a lot of the characters i really like a lot of the elements but i have to be honest like this wasn't my favorite episode and so we'll see what happens next i mean polaris is awesome and so again like she could carry the show i want blink to do a little bit more than just be kind of like the uh kind of the like the rebel go-to person to solve problems with people that are in in need that really have nothing to do with the main storyline like that's cool but give me a little bit more with blink because she's pretty dope as a character and i think that um there's more to be done there i feel like she's being sidelined a bit i like that thunderbird was given a like a good amount of of center stage time on the show that's good uh, I like Thunderbird. I like the character, and I like the actor. I think I think it's I think it's a win. Like everything that we're seeing, there's a win. So, so hopefully we'll see a lot more with him. And, and clearly, because it was such a big focus on him, like I believe that's going to happen. Um, the Sentinel Services guy storyline. That's uh, I'm wondering if that is a storyline that didn't need to happen. You know, like maybe we should have left the Sentinel Services everything in the last season and kind of move forward to this confrontation that appears to be brewing between the inner circle and like the under you and underground, these X-Men ish characters. Uh, but you know, I mean, I, the actor's good. And so his story is interesting and his wife is a really great actress. Like I, like when she was acting, when she was like, you know, making her speeches about wanting him to move on or whatnot, like, it, it was like, it was poignant. Like I felt it, you know? And so that's a, that, that's a good thing. You know, like we have a character that's not important, but she's like, she's committed and she knows how to act and she does it well. And it's coming off well. Like I want that from every character. And I feel like, again, like this show, it's, I mean, obviously it's the casting off the, the casting director, the casting office. Like they're not, they are just allowing, you know, a bit of a mediocrity to like kind of uh, enter the show at times in terms of the acting. And I, I, I don't mean to be negative folks. I'm just trying to be honest about uh, some of the elements that I'm, I'm a little bit torn about. Anyway, all the, all the, the negativity aside, like it's, 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 it's moving forward. It's a show about mutants. I'm excited. I can't wait for the next episode. Let's see what happens. And, uh, you know, I guess, I guess my big problem is this, like, because I'm not feeling like super excited. Like I know that the average person watching is not going to feel super excited. So if I, a big X-Men fan, I'm not going to be like supercharged, galvanized into like just fandom geek out, just bombastic madness, then what is going to happen to the the person that is just like casually flipping through the channels and watching the show? Like, are they going to want to watch the show? Are the people that not, that are not X-Men fans that watched a bit of the show, are they going to want to continue watching the show or is the show going to fizzle out and then get canceled? And then that, that'd be the end of the show. You know, it's like, it's an up, it's an opportunity. You know, this is like the second live act. Now this is the third live action X-Men show that's ever existed. Cause there was another show. It was called generation X they did a pilot movie. They did, it, it was horrible and they never went forward, but that was the first. And now we've got this one and Legion. So, so it, this is like, it's a unique thing to have a mutant show. You know, they had that show. It was called, I think, I think it was called mutant X or something. I don't know. It was a show. I never watched it, but it was, I think it was on like the late nineties, early two thousands. And it was supposed to be an X-Men show, but there was a problem with the rights and the creators weren't able to authentically use like the X-Men world within it. And so they basically just did everything they could to kind of skirt the, the topic of, 
mutants and X-Men within the X-Men world, but basically did like a mutant show. Um, but I never watched it because I, I just remember like anytime I caught it, it was like the quality was not that great. You know, like the budget obviously was not that great. The acting was like so-so. And so, you know, I, I never really caught my attention. I didn't find out about the X-Men connection until a lot later. So I'm not really interested in watching it. But, uh, but yeah, that was the other show. And, and so now, like clearly with Legion, we have a really great quality show, but it's still not quite a great X-Men show. And here we have a potentially great X-Men show, but the quality is like, it's a couple of notches below what I needed to be. I have a feeling that I'm going to be very excited by the way the season's going to play out because that's kind of what happened last season. The first few episodes were like, all right, I'm all along for the ride, but I don't know for sure if this is like the show that it should be and if I'm all in on it. Um, but then, you know, when, when the things started unfolding, when the, when the storylines like took me places that were exciting and like really entrenched in X-Men lore, that turned the tide for me and it made the show like great by the end, you know? And so maybe this season will have that as well. I mean, clearly you're introducing new elements and that, that always takes a while to kind of flesh out. And I, I respect that. But still, like, I feel like a show on its second season, like the second episode can't be, it has to have, there's things have to always be happening, always. Like big things, captivating things, you know? That's my thoughts on it. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to happen with the Strucker father. I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to happen with this Reva chick. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, if we're going to see more of the mutant underground throughout the the, the, the world the, or the nation. Um, I'm looking forward to see uh, what's going to happen with Polaris and her baby. So her baby is having some sort of issue at the end. And so that's interesting, but it's probably fine. But but if it's a cliffhanger, it's probably not fine. It's probably something big. I want, I'm sure she won't. I'm sure the baby won't die. But what's going on with the baby, you know? Dawn, they called her. Dawn was the name of the of the sister on Buffy that was introduced in season five, and she was actually a mystical key <laughs> that some that some um, that some I think sorcerers like made into a person and convinced everybody in Buffy's life that she was Buffy's sister. Anyway, I wonder if that's a callback to that. Amy Acker was on Angel, which is the spinoff from Buffy. Uh, Evangeline Whedon. Whedon is the name of Joss Whedon. Joss Whedon created um, Buffy. So I wonder if it's like a nod to that. I wonder. Because I, I can't really think of a Dawn in the comics, in the X-Men like world but maybe there is one if there is let me know in the comments below i'll be happy to to uh uh think about maybe uh you know being a little bit educated about these characters there's a lot to think about folks i'm a bit tired so i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna check out for the night episode three is coming next week let's see what happens i think it's gonna be exciting anyway thanks for checking out my video thanks for checking out my channel if you haven't already done so click on that little button below the screen. That is the subscribe button. It'll allow you to keep up with my videos. Uh, check out anything that, might be pop, anything that might be popping up on my channel. And uh, as always, I'm going to sign off by saying that if you haven't already, you better put an X in that box, ladies and gentlemen, because ain't nobody checking me. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.